So we are back on Vault Lab or Vault Dev, whatever you want to call it. All right, we are on the machine Breach, which is a medium machine by XCT working on Active Directory and Kerberos. So this one was a little bit tougher of one than Baby than the one we just did. So let's go ahead and start off with Ruscan. We do have port 80 up running. Uh, does look like a domain tour, right? We got port 88. Okay, let's go ahead and do our um, craft map exec again, and we'll just go do it for the get the domain name of it right. And let's start off how I usually like to start off: SMB, LDAP, and RPC. So we'll start off with SMB client. See if we can look at anything in here. Doesn't look like it's fully up yet. This part's up over here, so we're good on that. Otherwise, you guys be a weird over here. There we go. Alright, so we got breach.vl. So let's go ahead and throw that in my nano host this time. Or my Etsy host, excuse me. Alright, let's go ahead and look at that share. And we're also got users, but share looks a little better to me. Since that's not normal. Let's see if we can actually look inside of it. And we can see if we would have a novice access anyways. Because this little guy like right here with a bunch of crap in the beginning. So we definitely have an obvious access if we do, we get in. Um, so once I got into here, I was a little bit confused because there's no info out of the box. But there are active users on the machine. So I decided, I was like, okay, let's go ahead and utilize something that I already have. And you can find that GitHub, smbkiller.py. So if I go to overgrown, care of one GitHub, which I may have to fix this strip because I used it and it did all right. It did what it was supposed to do, just not how I wanted to do it. And I've gotten better. So we have our SMB killer.py, right? We have all of our information that we got put into here. So let's go and sublime it. And put the IP address in here. All right, looks good. Now let's go ahead and run it. So if we do a Python SMB killer.py tech H uh, it says URL SCF and XML. Let's go and make a URL. Now one thing that sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't is if I do LS tech like right now, you'll see that it did make it evil that URL, but it's at zero. So we're just going to exit out of here. If I do it again, all of a sudden we're at 110. So let's go ahead and put at evil URL in there. Then we're going to do the same exact thing with an SCF file. So sometimes it decides to work, other times it doesn't. All right, that's zero bytes again. And all of a sudden it's 87. So we'll put that at evil SCF, which I'll try to work on that, try to get that fixed. Let's do a pseudo responder with attack V. So in case I've already done this before, that I can put them, get them again. And let's also CD into transfer and put those two files in there again. So I'm just going to try to drop this everywhere I can. And we do get back some credentials here, right? Let's go and exit off here. So we do get back some, some credentials here. We get back Julia Wong's credentials. So let's go ahead and echo that into hash.txt we'll say john hash.txt boom and we get computer one all right awesome so if we can get his julia wong we know now right one problem though she can't do anything she can't even win rm she can't rdp she cannot do anything okay um if we look at users we do get some users they're kind of useless to us but when I realized she can't do anything, I decided, I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and 
make directory LDAP, right? We'll see you there. We'll do an LDAP domain dump, All right? For her IP address here, breach.vl, Julia Wong, computer one, right? That's what her password was there. And once I did this LDAP domain dump, I saw some things that Firefox domain user HTML. I saw the service MSSQL. I was like, hmm, that's somebody I want to be, or I want to be Kristen Bruce. Those are the two people I really want to be, like right there, right? Domain admin, right? And then all of a sudden, service MSSQL, print operator, also would it be a bad one to be? Okay, which is what she is, right? So let's go ahead and let's start to look at her stuff, her uh, service MSSQL stuff, right? So first thing I did was put all those people into a user file, okay, with service MSSQL. So I just copy and pasted all these guys over into that user file, okay. And now from here, what we can do is we can go ahead and start to uh, do some different things, right? So let's do a get user spn.py. All right, priest.vl, Julia Wong, computer one, to make controller IP, and we're going to request because we, we're pretty sure there's most likely a Kerberosable account right here. And we do. Awesome. We get back a Kerberosable account. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab that MSSQL service, right? And let's go ahead and echo that into a hash. And we got trust no one. Let's go and try to evil win our admin is him. I don't think we can. Now he is a uh, MSSQL service, so we may be able to get in through something like MSSQL, you know, and uh, connect like that. But we could try, but, I th but we won't be able to really do much with him from here. What we need now is we need to create a ticket to be able to get in through the MSSQL client. Okay. So we could try, like I said, to get in this way. It's not going to work, but we'll go ahead and throw it at the wall. Trust no one. As you can see, still trying to make that connection. So what we need to do first is we need to get the SID of the domain. Let's get sd.py. No, that's not it. Um, you know what? This actually may be it. Try to remember how to get the domain SID. The way to be able to do it with an end packet. Look up SID, there we go. So we do a look up SID. All right. Again, breach VL, right? End packet, pretty much every single thing. It's going to go the same exact way. G to the wall, computer one, 10, 10, 10, 10 9, 5, 129. Uh, we're not obviously going to use that IP address, like right there. We're going to want to use that IP address that we've been using, right? It's so right there. And we should be able to get the SID for the domain, which we need for a ticketer, okay? So we can do ticketer.py. All right. Now, one thing we need is an NT hash for this, for this user. So we can head out to, let's go out to, um, NTLM converter, right? What I did was just type in trust, no one. Go ahead and grab this, and that is the hash that I gave right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a ticket for this user, okay? So we use ticketer.py. This slash just makes it look prettier. 
we got our Etsy hash, our domain SID, right? Which is right here. Okay. Our domain name, which is breach.vl. Our SPN, which is going to be MSSQL service, port number at breach.vl. Okay. If we don't know, we can get users SPS.py again. And you can see it right here. Okay. So MSSQL service, breach VL 1443 at breach VL. Okay. And then from here, the user ID, which administrator is always 500. So we can just say 500 administrator. Now what this is going to do is this is going to create a ticket under the MSSQL service as an administrator and pretend that we are an administrator. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now it saved the ticket to administrator crash. So now we need to do, we need to export our KRB5CC name, okay, to the administrator.cache. All right, hit enter. And we have now exported our ticket. So now we now have a ticket to be able to be allowed in through Kerberos to the Tinkerbrain ticket system. Um, so it's through the Tinkerbrain system to be able to be allowed in to the server as the as um, the administrator, which technically won't actually be an administrator, uh, but you'll see that in a second. Uh, but we're, we now create a ticket. So let's go ahead and do an msclient.py. Okay, breach.vl. Let's go ahead and look that up like real quick for you guys so you understand exactly what's going on here. Now remember, I already put that into my Etsy host, right? So that's why we put that in our Etsy host is right there or else this is not going to work. Okay, tech case, say use Kerberos authentication, KRB5CC name, which we just did with our ticket, right? No pass. We don't need a pass because we already have Kerberos authentication through a ticket. And then we're going to use Windows authentication. All right, we are using Windows authentication here. Let's go ahead and enter. And there we go. If you are having problems on this part, if it keeps giving you weird errors and things like that, and you did everything up to this point, ascertainment, what's up, man? How you doing? Go ahead and uninstall impact it. Um, sudo apt remove impact it, pip3 uninstall impact it, and then reinstall impact it because you have an old version of MSS Google SQL client and it's not giving you the correct uh, SSL and TLS certs. Okay. So we now, if you look at it, we are now in the MS SQL server, right? That's what we see here. I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. As you can hear, I, I lost my voice the other day. Um, started to come back. So I want to stream these couple of boxes that I did. So now that we're here, let's go ahead and let's turn on. XP command shell. Okay. So we now have turned on XP command shell, which means we can run commands on the actual machine itself. That's what XP command shells will allow us to do. Okay. Now let's go ahead and we can try this a couple different ways. We could try to maybe do a, I don't know. Try that. Okay, access denied. Okay. Um, but what we could do is we could try to run different things like a reverse shell. We could try. So let's go ahead and make directory. Z temp. Okay. And we'll go into tools over here. Start up a web server. Go ahead and listen to that port 445 and we'll run XP command shell. Um, we'll do a quick wget HTTP my IP address nc64.exe tech O for out file, right? It's going to be C temp nc64.exe. Now, just to make sure nothing messes up with this, we'll go ahead and we'll use basic parsing. 
Let's see if we get anything back here. Oh, whoopsie daisy. XP command shell. Power shell. Power shell command. All right, cool. So we should have just downloaded it now in CTAP. We go ahead and do a DIR. XP command shell. DIR for CTEMP. Messed it up. All right, and we do have our NC64.exe. Let's go ahead and do an XP command shell. PowerShell, taxi, C, tab, NC64.exe. Tag E is going to be command. Put in my IP address again. And then the port I want to listen on, 445. Since we know that we can already hear that port and everything like that. And hopefully we get a call back here. And we do. Who am I? And I should be MSSQL server still when I am. Okay, so let's go with CD into C temp. And let's go ahead and do a, um, let's see here. Um, a who am I? Slash all. Okay. And we can see that we have SE per se privilege. Now, this should be easy, right? That's an easy day, right? System info shows that we're on uh, server 2022. Easy day, right? Um, yeah, it wasn't for me. And that's because it kept picking up on my exploit. So, what I end up doing... Um, was look for something called potatoing.exe. All right, so we can use that potatoing.exe. This guy decides to actually register what I told it with system info. But we're going to be using uh, juicypotatoing.exe for this guy right here. And then that'll allow us to be able to run... Um, our different commands and our reverse shell and everything like that back to us to be able to get a another um should be another um administrator shell if it decides to work for us here and it's still running let's go ahead and try to ping it like real quick still pinging it I think I just broke it with that command. Won't be the first time. I think we don't have to put everything back out there again, right? All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and get into PowerShell first. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this guy right here, CD to C temp. Remember, we do have per se privilege on there. And we're just going to do a quick wget from my IP address again. wget um, use basic parsing. There we go. All right, cool. So we go ahead and run this, see how the hell to run it. I think it actually tells us how to run it after we try to run it. Okay, it does. Okay. So it's got quite a few things in here like, hey, you need more stuff, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, cool. Juice potato, tag T star. Okay. We want to create a process, right? Um, from here, we then want to run a program, which is going to be ctab at c64.exe. And then we still need it to pass the arguments, right? Arguments in that program are going to be tacky command. Um, and then we got to put in my IP address here, right? Okay. 
that. I'm for 445. Okay. I think that should be all that we need. We'll go ahead and give that a try. Let's see if we get anything back. Let's see if we get anything back over here. All right, what we got here? Try a different comp for with attack L flag. Ah, I think it actually tries like some random ass port. I forgot what the hell it actually tries. Attack L comp. Default is 10247. Let's try again. It might take a couple times to get it. Mm. Okay. Let's do attack L. Four four five. You never know. Hmm. Man, I had this made problems last time whenever I ran it. I think I did have to run it twice, but there we go. Nope. Just kidding. <clears throat> okay. So seems like it's the privilege process failed to communicate our cops. So we're trying to account port with attack out flag. All right, so we're definitely going to have to try something else to be able to get that. Uh... There we go. We'll do it on port 443, and we do get a call back over here. Who am I? NT authority system. See users. And we can obviously get wherever we want to from here. And there's our root.txt. All right. So we can obviously do whatever we want from here because we are NT authority system, right? And that is it for that machine. And that one, like I said, was a lot of fun to do. It took me a minute to get it, but it was a lot of fun.